name is Stephen Crane, and this video will be going. I will be going over um, how to use the time frame to effectively create uh, an unlocking mechanism, um, where or an upload mechanism or whatever, um, to show that you need an active zero to 100% completion uh, for an event to take place. So let's get right into it. Uh, this is uh, one of my more recent levels. Uh, Pretty much for this, uh, the trigger is the uh, computer here. Uh, when you go up to it and press R, it unlocks the office door over here, allowing players to get into that room. Um, so let me hop over into the blueprint and kind of go over how to do, to the, how to do this. Sorry. Um, so pretty much all I have is I have a timeline that utilizes a float. So it's just your add float. It has a point at uh, zero seconds and five seconds, where the zero second point or keyframe is at um, a value of zero, and at the five second mark, it has a float value of 100. So that is all I did for timeline. Um, back to the event graph. So pretty much what I utilized in timeline to get this to work well is the update, the finished, and the play from start as well as the stop. So when the key is pressed you play from start meaning that if you've already pressed the R key um, but you let go of it it resets back to zero so the player has to hold it for the entire five seconds for this sequence to unlock. Um, that way somebody can't go up, press it for like a second, and then only need to press and hold it for another four seconds. Uh, this means that they have to hold it for that entire five second duration. Um, also, uh, using the stop, meaning that it doesn't just start and uh, continue all the way until it ends uh, on key press, if you release the key, it stops it, and then it plays from start when you press the key again. Um, so what we have it doing is on update, it does a print string. So it takes the value and it prints uh, what that value is from the float, converts it into a string here. Um, all you really have to do is connect the float value into the print string value, and it automatically comes up with this conversion. Um, so that way you can act actively see what percentage uh, has been complete because the player won't know that you have to hold it for five seconds unless you give it some kind of visual representation. So I just have it as simple as a converting it into a print string on update. Update is important because it's on every event tick. It will uh, update the print string with the latest float value at that time, um, creating a long uh, string of float values as it progresses forward. Um, then on finished, it unlocks the door. That means that it does not unlock the door until it has reached the end of this timeline. So if you end it at 4.9 seconds, it will not unlock the door. You have to play the entire timeline, so the full 5 seconds before it unlocks the door. You can use this for uh, something like where you have to download a data file or unlock a door sequence like how I've used it or anything really that you want players to have to sit there and kind of uh, interact solely with that object leaving a little more vulnerable to something else maybe um, and then once it does set the door as unlocked um, I just notify the player by saying that the office is unlocked so let's uh, let's hop into game here and I will show you how it works Get in here, have to first get to the area. So get into this office room here. Uh, let me actually go over here and show you that the door is indeed locked. There's no way to get in, no interaction that enables that door to be unlocked, except by these means. So we're going to take control of this bot, make our way quickly through the maze here. Alright, so we're at this console. 
it says press R to unlock the door. So I'm going to hold R. As you can see, it's uh, showing the float value on every event tick. And if I don't hold it for the entire duration, it resets it. So I can just tap it, keeps resetting it, hold it, let go, resets it. So let's hold it for the entire duration here. And there we go, office door is unlocked. So you can always hold this again um, unless you make it based on whether it's been unlocked. Um, you can just add a simple boolean um, into the sequence and prevent a player from reinitializing the sequence from start um, if they've, say, already unlocked it or whatever. Um, anyways, so now that we've unlocked the door, the door now opens. And that is how you can use a timeline to act as a download or key to a door or something like that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.